Welcome back to the Writing Inquisition, and I am joined once again by my lovely co-hosts, Marianne. I'm Emma Rosley. And by now, y'all should know me, Carol Button. Um, this episode, we're going to be talking about sort of the spark that gets everything started. Uh, basically, the ideas for our writing, where we they come from, all that good stuff. So, I already know I can't really answer the first one because it was so long ago. <laughs> Um, where did you get the idea for your current project? Oh gosh, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, mine. It was perfect. I remember. Miss Emrose. So I got mine because, okay, well, I can never remember if it was my senior year of high school, like the summer after that, or the summer before my senior year of high school, but I keep, I, I don't really work on it anymore, but I used to have this Word document where I write down all my ideas. And just like, so you can just put them there and then like forget about it. But I was looking through it and I'd written down Skeleton Carver, which I have no idea where that came from. That sounds cool though. But that's what I thought. So I was like, that's not very cool. That sounds really cool. Skeleton Carver, what would a Skeleton Carver do? Blah, 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 blah. So everything just kind of flowed from there, even though she doesn't really carve no, skeletons. But, but skeletons are there. There is re-articulation <laughs> early in the book though. Yeah. So, so the, the bone part at least has Come yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're really mature, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was just an idea that popped in your head one day and then you decided to expand on, or? Yeah, it was. Oh, crap, no, I can't really remember. It was, I remember seeing Skeleton Carver, which I don't know where that came from, and thinking, that'd be cool. What would you do if you were a Skeleton Carver? <laughs> like, what does that mean? Yeah, what like, does that mean? What would you do? And then there was, um, actually, segues nicely. So I was on um, figment.com, which I still am, but I just don't do much, which is a writing site. Ooh. And for, um, crap, I can never pronounce her name right. Lonnie Taylor or Lainey Taylor? I think it's Lainey, and I always want to say Lonnie. But Lainey Taylor, who writes Star, Smoke, and Bone, mm -hmm. which everybody should read, um, was having a contest on there, and she was like, write about the book that you want to write. So I was like, okay, I'll write about this, because I don't really know what's happening. And it started off, everybody had a little different names, and, um... It just started off me doing that, and I found Tamerlane's name because I wanted a name from Edgar Allan Poe, and he had wrote, written about the Turkish queen Tamerlane. And mm -hmm. I was thinking, well, I'll just make that feminine yeah. and make it Tamerlane. Feminize it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's how it kind of started, and it just it kind of just flowed out, just a little tiny scene, and I actually won the contest with it, Ooh, which was wow. cool. That girl, cool. hi. Yeah. Wow. So I got, let's see, what did I get? I got the last, no, I got the first two books. But the problem is, I wait. I had already read the first one from the library, and they took so long to send me the second one that I had already read the second one <laughs> by the time my own copy got sent to me, which is fine. But I was kind of wanting to wait. But I thought, like, oh, they're never gonna send it, and I didn't even know I had won. I don't think either. But um, yeah, I don't really remember how I came up with the scene. I think it just kind of popped into my head, and then everything kind of flowed from there. there. Yeah. Okay. Any closer to figuring it out? <laughs> uh, sort of. Yeah, I kind of remember I woke up one day early and I had this idea that I think I had probably slept on. Mm -hmm. um, and it was originally like about these seven sorceresses. Mm -hmm. And I had named each of them and they each, you know, were able to control an element, you know, and that sort of thing. It was very. <laughs> we all started that it way. It really huh? was. No, it was though. And um, yeah. And it, but my uh, my story kind of grew from there because like I tried writing like actual chapters of it, and I got kind of kind of far um, further at least than I have since. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't going the way I wanted it to go, and so then I put it away for a long time. And then in high school, I kind of picked it up again. Right. And then. Um, and then I put it away for a long time again, and then in college, after I met Daniel, mm -hmm. I picked it up again and started really going at it. And my story had changed, like, severely <laughs> at yeah. that point. Oh, yeah. No, like, all of this is new information to me, because it, it was nothing like that by the time you told me about it. Oh, no, no, that's, that's where it started, though, was, was the seven sorceresses. Yeah. And, and they all came together somehow. Yeah, and just... Point of clarification, the idea that you start with doesn't mean it's the idea you actually write. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. 
uh, mine, I started writing during like, eight, I know I started writing during eighth grade because I was homeschooled and a friend of mine at the time was writing and I, I tried to sort of copy her and write sci-fi and that does not work for me because <laughs> <laughs> this was well before I got into Doctor Who and it was a time travel story and it was like, ah, this is not working. <laughs> And to make matters worse, each chapter was just barely over a page long. Oh. <laughs> no, it was so bad. So bad. Um, and then, like, I had enjoyed the process, but not the story that I was working with. So I decided, like, well, I read a lot of this genre. Maybe I should try this. And angsty little me, <laughs> like, wanting to get out of the house and all that stuff, started writing a runaway princess story. And... You know, back then there were two female best friends and the one that is kind of the asshole. And everybody was based on people I knew. And, like, this was before I had figured out Brander and, like, his whole thing. Mm -hmm. Not even getting into what he now is. Yeah. Um, thanks, Talitha. Um, and, like... Tarek didn't even come into the picture until like two thirds of the way through the book, and it made no sense, and it was, it, it was really bad. But, like, with each draft that I've done, I've really tightened it up, and it wasn't until the second draft that he became an astral weaver, and all this other stuff, and it's just evolved from there. <laughs> Stories get a lot of evolving. Uh huh. Not always with what we want. No. <laughs> Okay, so we've already discussed the questions, we know what's coming, but uh, do we get ideas that work with our current project? All of us do. All of us are excited about them for at least five minutes. And then we're like, <laughs> and we're like wait. How is that going to work with what I'm actually doing? How can I make that work? This next one. Because <laughs> yeah. I really want this to happen. And again, we'll get into it later, but purple squirrel! We need to like get a purple squirrel plushie or something. Oh, <laughs> we do. We do. We need to do that. Oh my god. Like a violently purple squirrel. Yeah. Just oh lord. Extremely bushy hair. Yes. And like we we've had to like figure out ways of getting that to actually be a thing in both of our stories. And th in book two for me, there is a glimpse of it, but it is a passing remark. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes no sense to anybody at the time, and the character who observes this is very distracted, and is, like, just, oh my god. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> It'll make sense later once you've read both of our books, and, yeah. <laughs> once you've got through our books, oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then we're now trying to figure out ways that we can get Ambrose's stuff to come in, too. <laughs> this is what we're, how can we make this work? <laughs> yes. C c because just getting the fair one involved is going to be so much fun. Oh, yes. yes totally. I'm glad you guys like them. Mm -hmm. I actually put in a whole explanation of them, like, in the prologue, because I was like, I need to explain this. Because this is not a thing that exists already. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, let's see. Yes, we definitely get ideas that don't work with the current project. Um, I know I can plan multiple projects and work on one, but can you guys do multiple projects at the same time? I have come up with other ideas for my story, however, this particular story that I'm working on right now consumes me. Cool. Um, so I, what I've done is just wrote, wrote like a synopsis of what popped into my head, knowing that it can't work for this particular story that I'm working on, but it would be a great other story to work on at a different point in time. Yeah. Um, so I just write it down as much as I possibly can put it away. Yeah. I try to. I used like growing up I always did, but now I have like no time. So So you gotta pick one. <laughs> you gotta pick one and yeah. then but it is nice for me at least. I mean, I haven't really been writing consistently for a while just because work. But And for we're me, all adjusting to yeah, actual adulthood. And exactly. All this. So but for me at least I know I like being able to like work on something and then go to something else to kind of like clear my brain out yeah. and all that, but I just haven't really been acting on it. So kind of yes and kind of no. It yeah. kind of depends. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and like, 
if any of you have visited my Pinterest page, you know there's a whole bunch of shit that makes no sense. Because, like, I have character bank, I've got lines I want to steal, I've got, like, yeah. locations and all this stuff that cannot possibly fit. I, I have way too many castles on the locations page, though. <laughs> I have a lot many. of castles too. A lot of places yeah. that I would like to have fit, and it don't. Yeah, I was like, nope, this is not gonna work. No, yeah, but I but like them anyway. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I, I definitely keep track of my ideas more on Pinterest and just like the vague spark that's there. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? Pinterest is great for that kind of stuff. Too. Oh yeah. Getting ideas. If you're having trouble getting ideas, just search like creative writing prompt, and you can. You can go all by sorts genre, of you can go by images. Yeah, you can, yeah, exactly. There's all these sorts of fantasy images. If you're having trouble describing a place, go search it up. Yeah, go look for one, find one that is close, and then you can just describe what you want from that place yeah. and all that. Like, I've actually found really good, like, um, garden lights on Pinterest. That yeah. Like, this is perfect for the castle! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want that! <laughs> and. Oh look, I don't even actually have to ask that question because we're already talking about it. <laughs> the how do you keep track of the ideas that don't come oh, with your yeah. primary? Pinterest! <laughs> Pinterest! Pinterest! Pin all the things! Yes, pin all the things, seriously. Yeah, and like, I've got a costume board, I've got like a gorgeous dresses board. Cause, uh, yes. Which is why I can't afford most of them, but you know. But they'll be great for your story. Bills. Yes. Ooh. It's talking about royalty here, they have to dress up every now and then. And ambassadors in multiple versions of the word. And yes. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and like I mine I do use Pinterest, but like not well mostly because I know I'll spend like five for hours. hours. Yeah, you can look at that's, that's stuff. the only thing you have so to So I've been restraining myself, but I have a board for my novel that only yeah. has like four I can't find images that like match what's in my head. Yeah, especially like for the fair one, I, I can't imagine yeah. somebody actually having thought like of that won't. other than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to wait for actual, like, you have to either go to an artist and be like, can you draw this? Yeah. yeah. Or you have to wait for fan material to come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is my dream. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I'm very happy to say that I do have some fan art already, just because um, my first writing partner was also a digital artist, so she did some stuff That's for me. That's cool, yeah. But, I mean, I don't have fan art for people I don't know. <laughs> Which would be nice. <laughs> Which would be nice. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm sort of looking forward to it. But I know what fan art can do sometimes, and I'm kind of terrified. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's flattering and terrifying at the same time. Yeah. And yes. same with fan art, or uh, fan, fan fiction. fiction. Oh, yeah. 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 That. Yeah. I have too many journals, so all of, I mean, for a while I've been like, oh, I'll write down my views in this one journal, that just not. Happen. And then you forget where you put yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so my ideas are scattered everywhere, and then I had that idea document where I got the first idea from, but I haven't written all that in a while. I've been having really weird dreams that I want to make the story, because I think because I was reading so much, it became like a narrative yeah. dream in my head, and I was like, that could totally work, but I haven't written it yet. Yeah. I've been doing other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so they're scattered everywhere in my room. Yeah. And that's always hard, and like, just keeping track of the shit you already have written down is yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah. Because like, I know in that first time that we hung out after the um, Celtic like class. Yeah. Or mythology or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Like, you were really excited because I already had like an organizational paradigm to keep track of all my shit. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I haven't quite used it in the same way, but it Well, no, because you're a different writer than I Yes, am. I am. I, yeah, definitely a different writer. <laughs> but I did give it a go and um, realized it didn't quite work for me, but I was applauding how you organized your stuff because I was just like, I need to come up with some sort of system. Yeah, and now I've condensed all the organizational documents into one for my entire series. There are so many character paths. Yeah. <laughs> I went to like 52 characters in total. Oh and it's God. terrifying. It is terrifying. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, what? And like, I don't know, do you have the organizational thing for? I attempt to, and then it does not work. But yeah. I recently, I tried a demo of Scrimmer, like, five years ago. I purchased it. And then I finally purchased it and that's helped because there's a little box where you can just do general notes. Mm -hmm. So I just like did everything I was insecure about in that little space. So that's kind of organized and I kind of did a plot outline for each chapter. Yeah. So that helps but like most of the time I'm really... Okay so we had to pause for like half an hour to recharge my camera because we ran through the battery real fast. Yeah. So. M. Rose, I believe, was talking, so would yeah. you like to continue? I think, 
had like one half a sentence to say. <laughs> all it was is that all my ideas are based, no, how, I'm not like, I'm not organized at all. So all my other projects from like third grade on was just, would be like, blah 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 story and then like I would have a document for notes and then there would be several drafts but I wouldn't be smart about it like I wouldn't go <laughs> oh draft one it would just be like draft and then it would be like draft with two spaces it's so, like totally not organized um yeah. now I'm trying to I'm a little better with Scrivener like this much better yeah. but I think you know, I have sort of helped you with the chapter naming thing because I sort of enforced that convention yeah so with your notes but I can find them yeah but everything <laughs> else like isn't like <laughs> organized yeah no because like when Emrose and I exchange notes, it's the acronym for the story, and then, like, for me, we're oriented subtitles, because book two and all that. Chapter. Number. Number. Underscore. Whoever it is, commentary. Yeah. For, like, the yeah. note that comes back to us. Yeah. Because <laughs> that way we can just, like, copy paste <laughs> and, like, edit on one document instead of, like, I want to keep these notes in case I delete something that I didn't want to delete and all that stuff and if there was a good reason for deleting it and then you just suck it up and yeah. all that. So that's organized but nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you two but I am horribly disorganized in my real life but my digital life is very organized. But you have your I'm notebook. pretty disorganized either way. <laughs> I do have my notebook. I also have... Your binder, your, your, the thing you showed in one of, one of them. Oh, like the printout of the... Um, okay, so she's talking about one of the um, Writer's Toolkit videos where I was talking about like the um, Excel sheet that I have and that was actually a printout of it because I couldn't, I didn't mm -hmm. have a smartphone at the time. Mm -hmm. So I was like taking that to work with me when yeah. I had spare time as a receptionist. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was that and I do still have that somewhere except it's pissing me off because now it's not complete because I've added like six more characters. <laughs> yeah, and that one was also before all the name changes happened. Oh, it was, so that it was literally Lara. like Tarek, Kylara, Morella, and Deja that ended up keeping those names, and then everybody else, like, I still don't remember some of them. <laughs> That's what Search and Replace is for! Yes. Uh, I have a whole page of Search and Replace on that spreadsheet now. <laughs> But at least we can now pronounce Kyler's mom's name! Yay! Because now it's easy! Yeah! <laughs> As opposed to two A's followed by an S H. Yeah! R. No. Like, how does that even. Yeah, like, I, that one I know I was never pronouncing right. Because <laughs> I was inserting an I between the H and the R. Yeah. Well, wasn't it Nicolette? Oh, that's right, you had it as Nicolette. Um, now it's Aveline? Aveline? It's Aveline now. Um, I guess when I was sending it to you, it was Nicolette. It was. But <laughs> <laughs> before that, it was like a Shirith or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was like two A's, S H R I T H. Nice. <laughs> I was like, I have no idea how to pronounce this. <laughs> and it was also like way before I actually like did, okay, this country is going to have this country of origin for names and like actually keep it consistent. <laughs> Because it wasn't before. It was really bad before. Oh man. You know this stuff. You, you've had to read oh. this. Oh. Or at least parts of it back before I figured out actual names. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I know we all have those weird ideas of like what if, which is where the whole Purple Squall and. Yes, yes, that's where that evolved from. That's where that came from. And that was. I th I'm pretty sure that happened during a giggle fit on the shuttle. <laughs> yep. I, and I'm pretty damn sure that we scared the crap out of everybody around us. Yep. Um, Most definitely. Uh huh. And like, did you move to a new train car after I left? No. <laughs> no. No. Because it was on the shuttle between campus and. The oh, station. the shuttle. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, because we only ever took the same train when we were going to each other's houses. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's completely got, different train lines! You got onto Pittsburgh and I got onto. like Fremont. Yeah. <laughs> or Fremont. Pleasanton. Yeah, the Dublin Pleasanton or Fremont line yeah. was on your way home. Yes. And then, like, we also came up with the idea for the crossover and how that would work. Mm hmm. 
and now we have to evolve again because yes. <laughs> we want to all get involved on this. Yes. Make it even more crossover. Bah. What up? What up, please? And like the glass forest, you already had the idea for that, but mm -hmm. we sort of expanded it. Yes. And I know I'm the first one to actually like get a canon scene written for that. Mm -hmm. And I remember sending that to you and you really liking it, but I loved it. getting distracted by real life and not being able to like talk to me about it until yeah. we got back to school. Yeah. And now I really want to figure out how we get the Pharaoh involved. <laughs> me too. Ah! I must read up more about them. Yeah. You. Ten things. Ten things. Ten things. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a freeway in the Yeah. A, a grand freeway. Yes. <laughs> We've been at this a while. We're kind of tired. Yeah, <laughs> yes. This is where um, we start getting silly. Yeah, which is where more ideas come from. <laughs> Especially with other fantasy writers. Yes. That was the whole. That is the entire basis of our friendship. It is. It is. You're, literally, I refer to you as from to, from to my other friends. Is um, you're my writing friend. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. You're my writer friend. Yes, my my psycho writer friend person thing. Oh, I don't. <laughs> All right, moving on. Yes, stay on topic. Uh, Where are we? Are we? Uh, oh, we just we just. Okay, so the last question that I've already like figured out for this particular podcast was when we started our primary project was the idea fully formed or only partial. I'm gonna say partial because it's changed a lot. Unless you guys want to go first, I can yeah. continue. No, go. Okay. Um, God, what even happened? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was... <laughs> what happened? Yes. It was definitely partial because all I had, like I told you guys earlier, it was originally a portal fantasy. So Not was, anymore! Not anymore! So originally it was the human world and then I made up this other world and now I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna just put them in the fantasy world. And, um... Um, I don't know, but I know I'm mad at you for what you were planning to do originally with yeah. Tamarine and Farron. Yeah, the original one that was, is not happening. was a sad ending, and then it wasn't going to be... I, I always wanted to write a trilogy, but I never had any basis for like what could happen next and how to do, so that's evolved a lot. But I think the her working with Bones is still there. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the technically same. still there. Yes. Because I'm not remembering the writing's name, and I don't really bad about that. It's okay. What is her name? <laughs> <laughs> this is the other problem that writers have. We have a really bad memory for our own things outside problem, of context. The yes. problem is, is that she's, I keep forgetting to put her in, but she's actually important. Yeah. Just not until later. <laughs> yeah. So she disappears for like 50 pages, and then I go. I should oh, probably include that. Yeah. Her name's Aliris. I think that's how yes, you pronounce yes. it. That yeah, I that's totally pretty, yeah. stole from Welsh, yeah. basically. I yeah. think I switched some letters. Well, you kind of have to if you're not Welsh yeah. and you're trying yeah. to use some yeah, Welsh exactly. names. This is not going to work! Yeah. Nope. Yep. So her. Yeah, she's still there. She was yeah. originally there. Oh yeah. yeah, I was really dorky and I was going to make her be named Nevermore. Because I, <laughs> I liked Edgar Allan Poe and like little like 17 year old. To be fair, that, that still would have made sense. Yeah. The little 17 year old me was like, yes. This is worse. Now I'm like, nope. <laughs> yeah, because it's in like the first chapter or something. That yeah, it was also be. included the human world, so you would have context. But yeah, but now it originally, Illyris was basically like a rearticulated bird skeleton that oh. Tamerlane sort of accidentally rebrought back to life. Yeah. So <laughs> Nevermore would kind of work for yeah. that anyway, but. But now there's no Edgar Allan Poe. No! Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and then I know you've changed a lot as well. Yeah. It, it was not a full thing. Oh no, not even close to a full thing. I had a, a an I like a small little idea, which then I branched out, and then I would, did a bunch of research, and it became this huge, enormous, monstrous thing, and then I had to reduce it, and still I'm currently reducing. Yeah, because <laughs> what we had. A, started talking about like two years ago or something was her series was going to end up being like 10 to 15 books long and that is very intimidating to approach. Oh yeah, yeah. And like, there is a lot that you want to include that would be really cool that it I don't be, know if it would actually work. It wouldn't work for the actual story.
story. Yeah. And that's what you have to keep in mind. Um, any ideas that you form, you definitely need to um, say, okay, well, this work for my story. Yeah, you kind of have to pull a Peter Jackson, which I know is a bit of a touchy subject for some people, but with the Lord of the Rings trilogy and mm -hmm. all of that, like, entire characters had to be cut because they ended up having to go, okay, what does this have to do with the story of the ring? Right. If the answer was nothing, it had to go. Yeah. And that's kind of where you are at this point. It's yeah. Like, this has nothing to do with what's actually happening! Yeah, exactly. And so it's just a matter of trying to figure that out. So, uh, Marie was in the middle of things when we got interrupted again. Yeah. And essentially the answer was the same of... Yeah, it was not fully not formed. formed. Um, no, it evolved and changed and grew and shrunk and shrunk. It, it pulled an Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> it got bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller. Yeah. I didn't mention that. <laughs> I know you! I know you, girl! I know you. <laughs> yeah, no, mine... I just wanted to write a runaway princess story because I wanted to get out of my house as a 13 year old who couldn't really get out of her house. Um, it has definitely, definitely gotten a lot farther. It has also still changed because with the first draft of the second book, certain characters existed and now they don't. And certain characters did certain things and now they don't. So I had to reconfigure all of that, which has given me so many headaches, which then majorly impacts the third book, which I'm still figuring out. It is giving me major headaches. But, and like now there's characters that are coming up for the first time that I'm hoping go well. And ideas keep coming up no matter what, I think. And there's no real way to get a solid idea before you start. No. Yeah. I mean, it, they're all figments and pieces, and it's more just what you do with it. It's the seed that you get. Yeah, it, it's how you put the puzzle or mosaic together. Yeah. But I think that's it for this episode of the Writer's Inquisition, and we will see you next time.